Hi there, and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a trip through time, and explore the history of one of the world's most iconic brands, Coca-Cola. We'll see how this fizzy drink has evolved over the decades, from its humble beginnings in the late 1800s to its current status as a global powerhouse. Coca-Cola was founded in 1886 by John Pemberton, a pharmacist in Atlanta, Georgia. Pemberton created a syrup made from cocoa leaves and cola nuts, which he mixed with carbonated water to create a refreshing, invigorating drink. He initially only sold this to pharmacies, however that would soon change. The first newspaper ad for Coca-Cola was published in 1895, and by the end of the decade Coca-Cola was selling its syrup to soda fountains across the United States. This rapid growth brought with it some financial challenges. As Pemberton struggled to keep up with the demand for his syrup he decided to take on investors to keep the business afloat. In 1889, Pemberton sold the rights to Coca-Cola to Asa Candler, a businessman from Atlanta, for $2,300. This allowed Pemberton to continue producing the syrup, while Candler took over the business side of things and began to expand the company. Under Candler's leadership, Coca-Cola continued to grow and expand. By the end of the decade, Coca-Cola was a household name, and the company's financials were looking strong. As the new century dawned, Coca-Cola was on the rise. The company had been bottling its syrup since 1899, which allowed it to reach a wider audience and increase its sales. In the first decade of the 1900s, Coca-Cola continued to grow. One of the biggest developments for the company during this time was the introduction of the iconic Coca-Cola bottle. In 1916, the Root Glass Company designed a distinctive contoured bottle for Coca-Cola, which helped to set the brand apart from its competitors and make it instantly recognizable. These new products helped to drive Coca-Cola's financial success. The company's revenue grew steadily throughout the decade driven by a massive advertising budget which by 1911 was already more than $1 million per year. But the real growth for Coca-Cola still lay ahead. In the next few decades, the company would continue to grow and relentlessly expand. By 1920 Coca-Cola was not a new company, but it was impressive how big they had become in that time. In the roaring 20s, the company had a total of $33.6 million in assets, with a pre-tax net income of $4.8 million. That's a pretty impressive start for the decade. By the end of the decade in 1930, Coca-Cola's assets had grown to $83.6 million and pre-tax net income had risen to $14.6 million. That's almost a 300% increase. It's clear that Coca-Cola was doing something right during this period and that something was the company's new innovative marketing strategies. Coca-Cola was one of the first companies to use radio and print ads to reach a wider audience. They also started using celebrity endorsements and giveaways to get people excited about their product. In the 1930s, Coca-Cola had become an iconic American brand, but its financials were a bit of a roller coaster. The decade started off strong, with sales increasing by 50% from 1930 to 1931. But then, the Great Depression hit. With people's budgets stretched thin, Coca-Cola's sales dropped dramatically. It was a tough time for the company, but they were able to stay afloat by cutting costs and focusing on their core products. They also launched clever marketing campaigns, like the iconic drink Coca-Cola ads, to remind people of the joys of a cold Coke on a hot day. By 1933, the company had managed to get back on its feet, with sales increasing by 25%. And by 1939, the company was back to its pre-depression levels. The 1930s were a tough time for Coca-Cola, but the company's resilience and clever marketing strategies helped them weather the storm and come out stronger than ever. As the 1940s started, the world was experiencing a period of significant change. World War II had just ended and the United States was experiencing a post-war economic boom. The U.S. population was growing and consumer demand for goods and services was increasing. This was a great time for companies like Coca-Cola to capitalize on this growth. During this decade, Coca-Cola's revenues and profits grew steadily. From 1940 to 1949, 
the company's profits increased from $25 million to $38 million. The growth was driven by increased demand for Coca-Cola's products, as well as the company's expansion into new markets. In addition to its impressive financial performance, Coca-Cola also invested heavily in advertising and marketing during this period. By the end of the 1940s, Coca-Cola had become one of the most successful companies in the world. Its success was built on its strong financial performance, innovative products, and effective marketing campaigns. Coca-Cola's financials in the 1940s were a remarkable success story and a great example of how a company can capitalize on a changing market. As the 1950s rolled around, Coca-Cola was already a well-established and successful brand. The company had been expanding rapidly in the previous decades, both domestically and internationally, and it was now one of the most recognized and beloved brands in the world. In the 1950s, Coca-Cola continued to innovate and introduce even more new products. In 1961, the company introduced Sprite, a clear, lemon-lime-flavored soda that quickly became a popular choice among consumers. But the 1950s also brought some challenges for Coca-Cola. Still in the wake of World War II, the company faced increased competition from other beverage brands, both domestic and international. And in the late 1950s, the rise of health consciousness among consumers led to a decrease in demand for sugary sodas like Coke. As the 1960s began, Coca-Cola was still going strong. Having weathered some challenges in the previous decade, it continued to innovate and introduce even more new products, which helped to drive its financial success. In the early 1960s, Coca-Cola introduced a new product that would become one of its biggest hits, Tab. Launched in 1963, Tab was a low-calorie alternative to Coke that quickly gained popularity among consumers. It would become a hit with dieters. Further, in 1960 the company introduced the first canned version of its flagship product, Coca-Cola. This allowed the company to expand its reach and become more accessible to consumers. The 1960s also brought some challenges for Coca-Cola. In the midst of the civil rights movement, the company faced criticism for its lack of diversity in its advertising and hiring practices. And in the late 1960s, the rise of the counterculture movement led to a decrease in demand for mainstream, mass-market brands like Coke. Despite these challenges, Coca-Cola continued to thrive. New products helped drive Coca-Cola's financial success. In 1970, Coca-Cola already had an impressive net income of $147 million and total sales of $1.6 billion. While Coca-Cola was doing well in the 1970s, that isn't to say it was without its difficulties. In 1979, the company faced a major challenge when Pepsi-Cola overtook it as the leading soft drink in the U.S. One of marketing's greatest accomplishments occurred during the late 1970s and early 1980s when Pepsi surged in market share and threatened to pass Coke as the number one soft drink. This was largely attributed to the fact that most people found Pepsi's sweeter taste more pleasing. By 1983, Pepsi was not only preferred over Coke in supermarkets, but it had also caused Coke to make a panicked business mistake. In an effort to remain ahead, Coke began taste tests with the goal of creating a superior product more palatable than both Pepsi and their own classic Coke. This ended up leading to the disastrous creation of New Coke, a sweeter version of the beverage designed to outdo its predecessors in the taste testing. After massive public backlash, management ultimately came to the realization that they had made an error and executed a strategic turnabout that has kept them ahead of their competitors ever since. Not only did they bring back the original version under the label of Coca-Cola Classic and sell it alongside New Coke, but as time passed, the New Coke was eliminated and Coca-Cola Classic reverted to simply being known as Coke. In 1981, Coca-Cola reported a net income of $482 million and revenue of $5.9 billion. This was mainly due to the company's focus on cost-cutting and efficiency. In 1981, the company released its first diet soda, Diet Coke. It quickly became a hit and is now one of the most popular diet sodas in the world. In 1985, 
Coca-Cola released another classic, the iconic Cherry Coke. It was an instant hit and is still one of the most popular sodas in the world. By the mid-1980s, Coca-Cola had returned to being a true global powerhouse and cash cow, with 1986 delivering net income reaching $934 million on sales of $8.67 billion. This was largely due to the success of the company's new products, such as Diet Coke and Cherry Coke. Coca-Cola truly was reaping the benefits of earlier innovation and investment. In the late 1980s, Coca-Cola continued to expand its product portfolio with the introduction of caffeine-free Coke and Sprite. The company also began to intensify its focus on international markets, launching products such as Fanta and Schweppes in Europe. By 1989, Coca-Cola was still one of the most profitable companies in the world, with net income reaching $1.7 billion on revenues of $8.6 billion. This was largely due to the success of its new products, as well as its focus on international markets. The 90s were a decade of growth and innovation for the iconic beverage company. At the start of the 90s, Coca-Cola was the world's largest soft drink company, with a market share in the U.S. of about 40%, compared to Pepsi's 30%. By 2000, that number had grown to above 45%. And the company's financials also saw a steady improvement during this time. In 1990, Coca-Cola reported a net income of $1.38 billion. By 2000, that number had grown to $2.2 billion. This growth was fueled in part by the company's new product releases. In 1994, Coca-Cola launched its first flavored soda, Diet Coke with lemon. The following year, the company released its first energy drink, Surge. In 1995, Coca-Cola released a new line of flavored sodas called Fruitopia. The drinks were a hit with consumers, and the company quickly expanded the line to include a variety of flavors. In 2000, Coca-Cola released its first bottled water, Dasani. The product was an immediate success, and it quickly became one of the company's most popular drinks. Over the next few years, Coca-Cola's net income steadily increased, crossing $5 billion for the first time in 2006. However, the financial crisis of 2008 had a major impact on Coca-Cola's bottom line. In 2008, the company reported a net income of $5.8 billion, a decrease from roughly $6 billion the previous year. Fortunately, Coca-Cola was able to bounce back in 2009, reporting a net income of $6.8 billion. In 2000, the company released another energy drink, called, Coca-Cola Energy. This was followed by the introduction of, Coca-Cola Zero, in 2005, which was a zero-calorie version of the classic drink. In 2007, Coca-Cola released, Coca-Cola Life, which was a lower calorie version of the classic drink. This was followed by the introduction of, Coca-Cola Light, in 2009, which was a lighter version of the classic drink. Finally, in 2010, Coca-Cola released, Coca-Cola Freestyle, which was a revolutionary new machine that allowed customers to mix and match different flavors of Coca-Cola. In 2010, Coca-Cola reported total revenues of $35.1 billion, with net income of $8.6 billion. Over the next few years, the company's revenues steadily increased, reaching $44.3 billion in 2015. However that same year, net income was only $7.3 billion, a small decrease. In 2019, Coca-Cola reported total revenues of only $37.2 billion, with net income of $8.9 billion. As we have shown, the Coca-Cola company has been a global leader in the beverage industry for over a century. But its performance has been lackluster in recent years. From 2010 to 2020, the company has seen a stalling in sales and profits, and its stock price has been stagnant. One of the primary reasons for the company's poor performance has been its failure to keep up with changing consumer tastes. In recent years, consumers have become increasingly health-conscious, and they are looking for healthier alternatives to sugary drinks. Coca-Cola has been slow to respond to this trend, and its sales have suffered as a result. 
The company has also been slow to embrace new technologies, such as online ordering and delivery, which have become increasingly popular in the beverage industry. Another factor that has contributed to the company's poor performance is its reliance on traditional marketing strategies. Coca-Cola has long relied on television and print advertising to promote its products, but these methods are becoming less effective as consumers turn to digital media for their information. The company has been slow to embrace digital marketing, and this has hindered its ability to reach new customers. Finally, the company has been hampered by its large size and bureaucracy. Coca-Cola is a massive organization, and its decision-making process can be slow and cumbersome. This has made it difficult for the company to respond quickly to changing market conditions and consumer trends. The Coca-Cola company has been a global leader in the beverage industry for over a century, but its performance has been lackluster in recent years. The latest financials for Coca-Cola have total revenues of $38.65 billion, and net income of $9.8 billion. So things have not been looking very good for the Coca-Cola company as of late. Coca-Cola has been a dominant force in the beverage industry for over a century. It is a shame that the company has been struggling to execute in recent times, but I believe there is still hope that they can return to their former glory. With the right strategies and a commitment to excellence, Coca-Cola can continue to be a leader in the industry for many years to come. Well, there you have it. We've taken a look at the incredible journey of Coca-Cola from its inception to now, and it's been quite a ride. From their financials to their new product releases, it's clear that Coca-Cola is a powerhouse in the beverage industry. We can't wait to see what the future holds for this iconic brand and all the amazing products they have to offer. Until then, enjoy a refreshing glass of Coca-Cola and cheers to the success of one of the world's most iconic brands.